Welcome to tonight's presentation of the Pro Basketball Association. If you want pro, you want the PBA. What's up, everybody? This is Chris with Ryan Water Entertainment and Marketing LLC. Pro Basketball Association. Forward Farm in the Blue. DFW just poops in the white. Ten minutes for. Start of the game. And away we go from Northeast Texas, Dallas, the site of tonight's PBA matchup presented by 1891 Sports on Triangle Media. And just like that, Dallas-Fort Worth, the Just Hoop squad, controls the opening tip and put three on the board as the Just Hoops are your designated home team in the white jerseys and the Fort Worth form at 1-0 on the season in the road blue. Counter three-pointer on the way from the other side, no good. And the defensive rebound cleared away by Just Hoops. This is a crosstown rivalry as both of these teams coming from the greater Dallas-Fort Worth area as the three-pointer on the way from David Kate starting power forward in that number 24 jersey for Just Hoops. And just like that, that lead has ballooned to six points as we are just underway here in the first quarter. To answer on the other end, three-pointer no good by J.R. Duffy, comes up short. Cross-court pass, length of the floor, battling underneath the bucket. Double-teamed under the basket, kicks it out top of the key, three-pointer on the way, and that one's missed by Cates. Defensive rebound goes to the Firm, who again, 1-0 on the season, their lone win coming against the BLTN Ballers. 99-92, that final score, in their opening game of the, of the season. Back on April, or excuse me, back on May 22nd. As the firm able to find the bucket there, 6-2 to two your score. Interior pass will get away from Cedric Harris. He was streaking toward the basket and lost it out of bounds. Turnover there as Just Hoops, excuse me, the firm coming back down the floor here. Pass over to the right of the lane and knocked away. Looking for the foul with the firm and it did not come. So another steal there by Just Hoops. Into the left corner, driving, losing the ball and the battle goes the way of Fort Worth. The Firm pick it up, and no one in front of him bringing it all the way down. Marcel McCreary with a transition bucket for Fort Worth. Starting lineup for the Firm tonight is uh, that ball kicked out of bounds off of the shoe of a Fort Worth player. Jeremy Matthews running the point tonight, wearing that number two jersey in the blue, uh, the, the royal blue with the light blue trim and the white lettering and numbering. J.R. Duffy, of course, the power forward in the starting lineup. He wears number 24. Wolf Rab is your shooting guard. He wears number 11. Dwayne Soders is number 33. He'll be the center tonight. And Marcel McCreary wears number 40 as your starting small forward. As the rebound cleared away, here comes the firm. Score is 6-4. to four. It's just about two and a half minutes have elapsed. Battle underneath the basket, and it's stripped away. Losing it was J.R. Duffy. Had it stripped away. Here comes Just Hoops. And the foul coming late. Driving hard to the rack was David Cates. And he'll head to the line for repair. Starting lineup for Dallas-Fort Worth tonight. The Just Hoops squad starting a shooting guard. Eddie Leal wears number one. Running the point, it's going to be Kent Garrett in that number six jersey. Those white jerseys with the looks to be dark purple striping, lettering, and numbering. Cedric Harris wears number seven. He'll be your starting small forward this evening down in the low block. David Cates, of course, the power forward, wears number 24, and William Ransom is the center. 
as the second free throw no good and the length of the floor pass turns into two points for Dallas Fort Worth it's seven to six quickly pushing the tempo here comes Just Hoops fouled on the way up the left-handed shot he can't make the adjustment and it will not fall but it's going to be Kent Garrett absorbing the contact gets the whistle and he will head to the line for two seven to six seven oh seven make it seven oh six left to go here in the opening period Cedric Harris and William Ransom a couple of big bodies lining up right across right across from each other down in the low block first of two on the way and it's good as Kent Garrett finds the stroke on the first shot attempt, he'll have another one coming as the lead is two for Dallas Fort Worth in, in, in their first game of the season. Have not been battle tested thus far here in 2022. And the second one will rattle out off of the hands of Harris. Garrett, rather, excuse me, Kent Garrett misses the second shot. And here comes the firm. Top of the key handled by McCreary. Kicks it to the right corner. Now back up to Wolf Grab at the right elbow. He'll hand it off. Three-pointer on the way and count it. Darius Ford entering the game for the first time this evening. And he's got the stroke for three. Nine to eight. Counter three-pointer. Won't go from the right corner. And the defensive rebound to the firm. Pushing the pace up the floor. Takes the contact. Finishes through it. No foul called. But a nifty piece of work there by the firm to push the tempo, crash the right side of the lane. I do believe that was Jeremy Matthews with the bucket and the firm have rallied to take a three point lead. Time out on the floor. Get back to action here. Just under six and a half left to go here in period. Number one is oh, looking for the foul where the just hoop squad. And instead, big man's going to be called for the walk. Shuffling those feet. I believe it was Jason Humphrey holding the ball underneath. He took that third step, and the official was right there to whistle it. So a turnover here. Let's see what Fort Worth can do with it. Matthews. Gets it inside to Wolf Rap. Fakes with the right hand, takes it underneath the bucket, and the wraparound lay-in is good. Make it 13 to 8. It's just hoops working with it here. Stephen McDonald coming off the bench. He'll run the point here. Looking for a man in the left corner, and there was some there was some confusion on the play call. As McDonald looking for a three-pointer. Looking to find his man for an open three in the left corner, rather, and no one was there. So a turnover on the errant pass, and the ball goes back to Fort Worth. In their second season here in the PBA. That's the three-pointer. Misses everything. 94-foot pass there, and finds no one. William Ransom. Looking for an easy bucket down at the other end. The long pass finds the back wall instead. So another turnover. Again, 13 to 8 your score as we are halfway through the first period. Again, the uh, PBA uses 10-minute quarters as opposed to the traditional 12 in the National Basketball Association. Nice passing underneath the bucket into the right corner. Three-pointer on the way. Battle for the rebound, and Just Hoops comes down with it. Down by five. Dribbling, driving as McDonald, follow away three, fouled on the shot attempt. It rattles off the rim, almost able to get it to go for the four-point play and comes up empty. So McDonald fouled on the way up. He will shoot three. And a chance to make this a one-possession game. First free throw up and good. McDonald with the stroke. As we were mentioning before the action, 
Dallas-Fort Worth, the firm here in their second season in the Professional Basketball Association officially. Now, they, they've been a part of the DFW area on the basketball scene for quite some time. But just joining the PBA in an official capacity last year in 2020, 2021, as it must have been only a two-shot foul there. It must have been just a bit inside the three-point line. Wasn't able to make that distinction from my vantage point. So McDonald goes one for two from the line, and the quick pass down the floor ends up uh, turning into nothing as the defensive rebound turns into points for Just Hoops. Transition offense coming back down the floor, and Just Hoops lays it in for two. It's a one-point game, 13 to 12. It's battling for the ball. Fort Worth will uh, settle it down in the right elbow. They'll work it around top of the key. Now bounce pass into the low block. Nifty pass that time as McCreary finds the open space off of the bat uh, off of the bounce pass from I believe it was Dwayne Soders with the no look bouncer. Firm by three. To tie it up, Just Hoops comes up empty, but the offensive rebound is collected. This is Cedric Harris falling away, kisses it off the glass, and count it. Three-pointers are flying here in the first period as Ty Tempo offense threatening here for the firm. Top of the key, three-pointer straight away won't go. Follow the bouncing ball, and Just Hoops comes away with it. As our official score, 15 to 14, as the clock ticks down to three and a half. Left to go here in the first period. Off the glass, three-pointer from way downtown. Doesn't matter, David Cates. You leave him open, he will make you pay. And Cates on the board with another three. Just hoops back on top by a deuce. This is the firm working it. Jimmy Kelly at the top of the key. Bounce pass to the low block. Now back up top to Kelly. Draws the double team, kicks it to the right corner, open three-pointer on the way, and it won't go. Defensive rebound, here comes Cates, working against two defenders, wanted the foul, did not get it, but he drops it home anyway. Cates, responsible for the last five points for Just Hoops, and it's 19.50. That long wingspan is going to be awfully difficult. As the pass down into the low block, drawing the double team and the foul coming. As the shot won't go. And headed to the line is Wolf Rab. Or excuse me, that'll be number 23, Jimmy Kelly instead. As Rab and Kelly so similar in, uh, in body style and stature. Rab, of course, number 11. Jimmy Kelly is number 23 as the first is up and good. Subs come in between shots, and the second one will tickle the nylon. It's a two-point game, 19-17, as Just Hoops remains on top. We've had one lead, or two lead changes, rather, in this first quarter as David Tucker working with it. Dumps it off to Humphrey, now back to Tucker. From the right elbow, he'll let the three-pointer fly too strong and cleared away by the firm. Defensive rebound, pushing it across the timeline. Euro step, nicely done with the left hand. That is Wolf Rapp. Starting shooting guard for the firm with a neat little Euro step to draw the defense to the right, create space to the left, and drops it in to tie the game. As the pass knocked out of bounds, it was intended for Stephen McDonald. And the firm get their hands in there to knock it away. McDonald will get it into David Cates. That's Cates. Iso, top of the key. Looks to step back. Will he let the three fly? No, he'll pull it down for now. And throws it away. The turnover taken away by the firm. Miss Rab into the left corner. Three-pointer on the way. No good. And getting the offensive rebound are the firm. Give them enough space, and they will make you pay. Jimmy Kelly on the second attempt there by Fort Worth. Showing why offensive rebounds of utmost importance, those, uh, of utmost importance, those second chance opportunities. That one there turns into a three-pointer. 22-19 firm is back down on the other end. Stoppage in play here as a battle underneath the boards. Foul will be called here against Just Hoops as Cates and McDonald were in there 
fighting for the loose ball. Timeout on the floor. Whoa! Personal foul. What the feezy? You can't use a beard trimmer below the 50 yard line. This is the waterproof lawnmower 4.0 by Manscaped. What's the difference? It's got new skin safe technology to help reduce cuts and nicks. It's powerful. Get gentle. Just like me. Dog, I appreciate you. Boop. Hey, watch out. Uh, I'm not ticklish. Get yours at manscaped.com. Handling as we're back to live action here. Isolated against Kate. Rapp takes it right at number 24, David Cates. And it's off the side of the backboard. Cates was chirping. I believe he's looking for an offensive foul, but he was well out of position. Lucky he wasn't called for the block, frankly. Off of the ball, knocked out of bounds. It will stay with just hoops, and they will bring it 94 feet back down the floor with 50 seconds left to go here in the opening period. McDonald hands it off to Cedric Harris. Three-pointer too strong. Battle for the rebound taken by the firm. They'll bring it up the floor. Handling was Jimmy Kelly over into the right corner. Now back inside. Turn around. Lays it in. Jimmy Kelly using every bit of that frame. Draws the foul and the bucket. The help side defense was there for the Dallas-Fort Worth Just Hoops squad. And the contact makes all the difference. So 25 to 19 as the three-point play is converted. I believe it was Dwayne Soders, rather, who was in the midst of that scrum. Foul called there as McDonald felt the contact coming leaned into it fell away and put up the shot just to see what would happen it did not go as Errol Sidney credited for his first personal for Fort Worth and he's looking for an explanation as McDonald will head to the line for three 25 to 19 this would make it a five point game and it's good Donald with the awareness there, the, the heady play to recognize the contact, absorb it, lean into it, and put the shot up. He'll miss the second free throw. 25 to 20, the score remains. Here comes the firm back down the floor. Easy lay-in is missed. As defended well was Jimmy Kelly. Off of the defensive rebound across the timeline, we've got a battle for the ball. Knocked out of bounds with 8.7 left on the clock. And the men in stripes say it was last touched by a member of the firm. So just hoops for the chance to tighten the score up just a little more. And it's taken away with six seconds left. Quick pass all the way down the floor. And defense turns into offense. As the Fort Worth firm make it 27-20. And that will end the first quarter. Shot is late and the lead is seven. Set to go with period number two here from Dallas, Texas. It's the Professional Basketball Association on Triangle Media, presented by 1891 Sports. Caleb Peak here with you this evening as it's a seven-point ball game. The Fort Worth Firm holding steady over the Dallas-Fort Worth Just Hoop squad, and that one is kicked out of bounds off the foot of a firm player. So Just Hoops will bring it back down across the timeline. Cates draws the double team top of the key, and it's taken away. Here comes Kelly. Jimmy Kelly elevates. Right-handed lay-in, and nobody's going to get in front of that one. 29-20, the Fort Worth Firm continue to pile it on. As the Firm, all, as if you'll remember, 1-0 on this 2022 season. Courtesy of the 99-92 victory over the BLTN Ballers back on May 22nd. Just Hoops having trouble handling the ball here. 
Straightaway three-pointer on the way from McDonald. That one comes up empty. And defensive rebound is cleared away. Length of the floor, nice pass. Drops it in over the outstretched arm of the defender. An excellent floor vision turns into two easy points. The lead is double digits for Fort Worth, 31-20. Just over a minute expired here in the second period. McDonald tried to drive, ran into a body. He's looking for the foul when the foul is not coming as the ball knocked around on the floor and out of bounds, last touched by just hoops. McDonald absorbed the contact. Lost the ball and pleading his case, but to no avail. Firm bringing it down right to left. Handling. It was Hornbeak. He'll kick it over into the right corner, and that's a wide open look. Nothing but nylon on that three point attempt. 31 22, the firm holding steady as McDonald will beat his man. Puts him on the floor and not able to finish with the left-handed lay-in. As Bonnie's flying all over the place, plenty of contact to go around. Let's see who the foul will be on here. And it looks like it's going to go against, is that David Tucker? It is David Tucker. Actually, Wolf Rapp. That will be Wolf Rapp for the Fort Worth firm. Responsible for the personal foul there before things got awfully heated. As we're back to action, three-pointer from Kent Garrett, starting point guard is too strong. Offensive rebound picked up by Champ Grayson, and he had it taken away. And another steal. Who can establish possession here? It's Kent Garrett finally finding an open lane. He'll hit it hard and lay it in off the glass as Just Hoops capitalizes on a loose ball that no one was able to get their hands on. 33-22. Sport Worth looking to settle things down here. Nice look inside. Reverse layup won't go as Jimmy Kelly working hard along the baseline. He was fouled on the way up. So Kelly will shoot a pair. And the first one is good. 34-22 is your score as substitutes checking in. For Fort Worth, looks like Just Hoops will keep everyone where they are. Entering the game is Darius Ford for his second shift of duty tonight. Second free throw is bouncing around and won't go. So one of two that trip down is Jimmy Kelly and Fort Worth and DFW Just Hoops with a chance to chip into a 12-point lead. Handling top of the key, it's Stephen McDonald. Directing traffic, hand in the face, he'll let the three-pointer fly, and that's why you have him running the point. Directing traffic, moving men away, setting up the isolation play. And McDonald able to get the contested three to drop. 34-24, the lead is 10 for the Fort Worth firm who handled the ball in the blue jerseys. Kelly. Splits the gap, drives hard, lays it up. It won't fall, but he was fouled on the way to the rack. Tough, physical offense turning into bonus opportunities for Fort Worth, mainly off of the hands of Jimmy Kelly. So he'll shoot two, and the first one up and good. Two for three, his last two trips to the charity stripe. As David Cates will re-enter the game for just hoops. And you've got to think that will be your quintessential matchup tonight. Cates versus Kelly. A couple of power forwards going at it here. You could really say Jimmy Kelly more like a shooting guard, but his physicality fits the, fits the description for a quality power forward as Kelly is perfect that trip to the free throw line. Two for two, 36-24. The lead is 12 for Fort Worth. McDonald, stutter step, drives right, he'll kick it back up top. Handling, left of the elbow, it's Grayson. Almost had it taken away. Gets it back into the left corner and kicked out of bounds. I believe that was Grayson. Working hard to get to the rack and he booted it to the back wall instead. So with a 12 point lead, 
Here comes the firm, and now Cades has checked back into the game. Garrett will exit. Cades has entered. And Kelly fakes left. Nice dish inside. McCreary had a semi-open look. Late defense collapses, and the lay-in is missed. High percentage look won't go. Cates from deep three. Too strong. Offensive rebound by Grayson. Out battles his man for the offensive board. And the foul is called. Let's see if they say it's before the shot went in. Or if it was before the shot was released, rather. I believe it will be. That should be a foul on the floor. And yes, it is. So 36-24, the score remains. And Joss Hoops working with it. Step back three on the way, and it was blocked. Kelly with the rejection. Uh, it stayed in the hands of Just Hoops. And on the recovery, Cedric Harris with the step back jumper makes it a 10 point game. 36 26. Firm in control still. Cross court, Kelly. Back to the top of the key, handling his fourth. Crosses up, left to right. Right handed floater, the teardrop. Too strong off the back of the iron. And the defensive rebound goes to DFW Just Hoops. Tucker. Drives, right-handed floater. He says, I can do it. And he'll drop it home for two. The lead is eight. As McCreary, starting small forward, will bring it over to the left elbow, top of the key, to Kelly. Back to McCreary. He's got an open three, and the big man won't get this one to fall. Too strong. Defensive board to Just Hoops. Tucker to Harris. Face up against the defender. Works right. Now he'll pull it back to the left, and he traveled. Yes, he shuffled the feed as, as he ball faked to the right, attempted to put the, fall, the ball on the floor and go back to the left, and when he did that, he shuffled the feed in the process. So two travels on the game so far. One for each side. And it's Jelon, or Jelon Hornby holding. He'll go up to Duffy, now back to Hornby. And the three-pointer on the way to Strong. Out of his range there as the defensive rebound cleared away. Tucker against a simple man-to-man -man defense here. He'll drive past Duffy, turn around, passes back up top to Harris. Now back to Tucker, he'll bank it in off the top of the glass. That is a high difficulty shot. And he found the bottom of the net. As Just Hoops continues to chip away, what was a 12-point lead is now 5, 36-31 with four minutes and change. Left until the halftime horn, battling hard for the ball as the firm come away with it. And we will certainly have a, a foul called underneath the bucket here. They'll, they'll wipe off the shot. They'll say it was a shooting foul. It didn't go anyway. As Jimmy Kelly continuing to force the issue. He's been a madman tonight all over the floor, and he picks up, or he will force Just Hoops into a foul as there's a timeout on the floor. 4.02 left to go until the half. It's 36-31. What happens when everything we know about something changes? I tell people all the time, this is the best American story you never heard. We're out hitting the pavement, talking to restaurants, talking to bars. I don't think of myself as a whiskey salesperson. I want you to know his name. Drink by drink, we're bringing this story to light. When we have to step back through the pages of history. It's so much more than whiskey. It's so much more than a brand. It's a movement. When we have to make amends and pay respect. We're honoring the greatest whiskey maker the world never knew. And it's beautiful. And give credit where credit is due. Uncle Nearest is the godfather of Tennessee whiskey, and the world needs to know it. What happens? We do it. Uncle Nearest, it's more than whiskey. Back to live action here on Triangle Sports. And off of the inbounds play. Up and in goes Darius Ford. He caught it, turned around, and dropped it home. 38-31. The lead is seven. And Tucker will answer on the other end. High tempo offense translates into two points. 
Sturm bring it across the timeline. It's Rab handling at the top of the key. Looking for a screen, and he'll slide between the defender and his counterpart. All the way over to Kelly at the left elbow. Now back to Rab. Just inside the arc, he'll face up against Cates, lets the ball fly, and the contested shot is altered. Cates will get the rebound as well, 38-33, as the firm still hold a five-point advantage. Isolation three-pointer here from Harris. Cross his man up, but could not get the shot to drop. Here come the firm in transition. McCreary dumps it into the left corner, now back up to Rab at the left elbow. And the firm will slow it down. Hornby drives, bodies on the floor, and in, call it a charge. It was Champ Grayson setting up in front of Hornbeek. He drew the contact, planted the feet, and we're going back the other way. As Hornbeek will stay in the game for now. He wants an explanation, but it looked quite clear from this vantage point. As Grayson took all of the contact, Firm still up by five. Just hoops with the ball, Tucker to Case. Just inside of the three-point line, it won't go. And the long pass. Boy, Fort Worth has got this figured out. Length of the floor, just over the outstretched arm of the defender. And it's in there for two. 40-33. It's the firm hanging on. 2.20 left to go until the half. Cates to Grayson. Back to Cates, back to Grayson. He'll let the three go. Semi-open, and it was too strong. Off the back of the iron. The firm pull it down. Hornby lets the deep three go. And that one too strong as well. So back and forth. Conditioning will certainly be a factor in this game as it's Tucker driving with the right hand. He'll float one from the charity stripe and count the bucket. Or did they? No, they will wipe it off here. So the score should remain 40 to 33 as the, I believe Tucker was only, uh, he was complaining that he wanted a foul call. He was looking for the and one. So the bucket is good. And Tucker was upset because he didn't get a chance for an and one. So 40 to 35 is your score. And now we've got a foul call on the way up. Jalon Hornbeek was fouled in the act of shooting and he will have a pair on the way. 148. Left to go here until the half. 1-0 firm against 0-0, zero zero, just hoops. Crosstown rivalry here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. First of two was good to make it 41-35, and the second one rattles around and drops. So Hornbeek, a perfect two for two. That trip to the line, 42-35, seven-point advantage for the Fort Worth firm. Tucker takes right, draws the double team and had it stripped away, but no, we'll have a foul coming here. As it was Hornbeek called for the region. Good thought by Hornbeek to apply the trap. But reaching for the ball, he made contact, and that's where the call comes from. So the inbounds play here by Just Hoop. Stephen McDonald back in the game. Top of the key, had it almost knocked out of bounds by Fort Worth. McDonald will get it back, and the fall away three falling to his right, and McDonald knocks the bottom out of it. He is dangerous from distance, 42-38. Firm still on top. They've led all the way here on the second period, but that lead is dwindling. It was 12 at one point earlier in the, in the half. And it's now four. As the foul coming underneath the bucket, battling hard through the contact and dropping it in. Is Fort Worth. And that was Wolf Rapp. My goodness, the strength on display to make that one happen. And the first free throw won't go. Well, it should only be one anyway. But a second one coming regardless for Wolf Rap. Interesting release. It's really a one-handed free throw attempt. That one comes up short as well, but Rab gets his own rebound. Fakes once, gets the defender off his feet, and drops home the high percentage look. 44-38, nice job there on the offensive board 
by Wolf Rab to widen the lead. On the other side, you can't leave him alone. Cedric Harris, catch and release. And he makes it a three-point lead for the firm. As Harris knocks down the deep three-pointer. Firm had it taken away. Stephen McDonald pushing the tempo. He'll kick it over to the right elbow. Harris with a three-pointer, no good. And let's see who the officials say touched it last. They will confer, and the ball will stay with the Just Hoops basketball team out of Dallas-Fort Worth. So inbounding is Jonathan Milligan entering the game for his first time late in the second period. Catch and release. The fall away three from McDonald is good. And we are tied up 44-44 off of the ridiculous shot by McDonald as Jonathan Milligan already making his presence felt in a timeout on the floor with 25 seconds left. Clock starts rolling again and just hoots with a chance to take their first lead since about midway through the first period. Just Hoops will hold for the final possession here if they can. McDonald working isolated, top of the key. Fall away three, that one was close, but it won't go. Three seconds on the clock. Fort Worth's got to get it out. Deep three on the way. It was partially blocked. Out of bounds, and that should do it. Let's see, are there five seconds left? No, the officials will say it is halftime. It's all knotted up, 44-44 from Dallas. prison in 2001, I had a tough time finding a job. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? When you get to that part of the application, your heart starts beating fast, your hands become sweaty. It doesn't matter your education or work experience. That's gonna be the determining factor. What up, what up, man? What's up? What's up with you? Hey, man. How you get it, man? Regular military, you got no size. Baby size. Baby size. I would fill out an application and they tell me that they're not hiring, but they got now hiring signs on the window. Did that make you go back to doing some of the things that you were doing before? Yep. That's crazy. Yeah. It's kind of like they forced you to. Set up. Like, it's, it's like set up. It's systematically set up for you to have to go back. <laughs> I was three years old when the U.S. Marshals came, beat down the door, and got my dad. Maybe like five the second time. I just kept asking my mom, like, yo, where's my dad? Where is he at? He would tell my grandmother, I'm not trying to do that no more. I'm trying to get my life right. What up, boy? What's up with your boy? Good to see you. Good to see you, man. Being a barber changed my dad. Being able to have a community that he can turn to when he needed something, that helped him a lot. That was a hard moment for me last year. All those ups and downs that you've been through, to look at you now, I am so proud of you. I'm happy to call you my dad, man. What you just said right there is what it was all about. Everything that I've done was for that. Now I can retire, so <laughs> I can retire now. Old man still got it. Now that look good, man.
Welcome back to Dallas, Texas. We've got a ball game here in the PBA on Triangle Media, presented by 1891 Sports. As we're all knotted up, 44 to 44, David Cates and uh, and Stephen McDonald have been the playmakers for just hoops thus far. And on the other side, it's been all Jimmy Kelly and Wolf Rab for the Fort Worth firm as the firm will have it to open things up here in the second half and missed on the shot defensive rebound by just hoops almost lost it Jonathan Milligan picks it up off of the tip ball and he'll go back to McDonald working isolation he'll move over to the left corner now skip pass to the right elbow three-pointer on the way from Cedric Harris count it 47 44 as the Dallas Fort Worth just hoops back on top for the first time since midway through the first period. So we've got a little bit of discussion here. Cates is pleading his case. It looked like Just Hoops turned the ball over. And the men in stripes say it will be Fort Worth basketball. As Jimmy Kelly has been a force to be reckoned with, explosive with the ball in his hands. He's got it in the left corner. He'll get it back, now skip pass. Over to Duffy, that's J.R. Duffy with a hand in his face, the starting power forward, and he will tie this thing up. Tit for tat, they go, three-pointer for three-pointer, and it's all tied up once again. McDonald to Cates, working one-on-one, -on -one. fakes right, spins left, that's a classic post move, and he can't finish. As Fort Worth will come back down the floor. It's Hornby. And the foul will be called here on the drive. They'll say it was a foul on the floor. 8.32 left to go here. I actually make it 8.33 here in the third period. Yes, we've got a good one brewing. Wolf Rapp. Shook off the screen from Hornby. Working one-on-one -on -one and Rapp having his way in the low block. Backed his man all the way to the baseline. And Rab, it was easy as pie for him. Turns around and flips it home. 49-47. That's the firm back on top. The six foot two Jonathan Milligan starts things here in the second half for just hoops. Came off of the bench late in the second, and he is headed to the free throw line for a pair. 28 years old, Jonathan Milligan played his basketball at the University of Pittsburgh back in his youth. First of two free throws on the way, and there's that ACC experience for you. Milligan knocks it down. He'll have another one coming with a chance to tie this game yet again. It would be the fourth tie of this young second half. And there it is, nothing but nylon. Forty-nine, forty-nine. Firm working with it, left corner to Duffy. Top of the key, nice pass back to Duffy, left corner, three-pointer won't go, he hit the deck, no foul coming. And defensive rebound is cleared away by Cates, moving it up. Harris, fakes right, he'll step back, lets the three-pointer fly, and no good. Open look for just a moment by Cedric Harris, he can't capitalize. Defensive rebound to the firm. Long pass into the left corner, dribbling and driving as Hornbeak, foul is called on the way up, and the physicality translates into a trip to the line. No, they will say it's a spot foul, actually. They say a foul occurred before the shot was let go. Or will they not, actually? It looked like one official was pointing to the sideline spot. Yes, yeah, there, there we are. It is a spot foul. So inbounding is Kelly. He'll get it to Hornby. Looking for the screen by Rab, but now Rab will just create space. He'll get it over to Duffy, who has a wide open three. He got lost in the mix. Duffy emerges wide open from the right elbow, and the three-pointer will fall. 52-49 as the firm, making it look easy here in the early portion of the, of the third period. Fall away floater by Jonathan Milligan. Won't go with the right-handed teardrop. Quickly, the firm pushing the pace. Three-pointer on the way by Kelly. Actually, uh, Chasing King, excuse me. That's Chasing King letting the three-pointer fly. And no good, of course. Jonathan Milligan gets it back to McDonald, working one-on-one -on -one against the big man, Duffy. Just Hoops works it all the way back around the top. 
Falling to his right is Harris. He can't get the teardrop to go. Body's on the deck. And the foul is called. That will go against David Cates. For just hoops. Looked like knee to knee contact on the transition opportunity. As they check to make sure all the perspiration is up from the floor. As both of these teams laying it on the line. Six and a half left to go here in the third period. I'm Kate Peak for 1891 Sports and the Professional Basketball Association. Three-point difference between the firm and Just Hoops. These crosstown rivals out of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Interior pass to J.R. Duffy, and with the size he is having, he's, he's having his way in the low block. Easy turnaround lay-in. And you're going to need some pounds to go up against a man that size. 54-49, wraparound lay-in, and that's Jonathan Milligan streaking down the baseline to reduce the lead to three points for the Fort Worth firm. Milligan has been the surprise, uh, the secret ingredient, if you will, the secret weapon for DFW Just Hoops here in the second half as the ball is turned over out of bounds by the firm. And Just Hoops with a chance to potentially tie here this trip down. McDonald working from the point. He's had a quiet period so far. Fouled on his way left of the lane. Flipped it up just to see what would happen. It almost went, but did not ultimately. So McDonald will earn yet another trip to the free point line as, or the, the uh, free throw line rather, as substitutes will check back in. Marcel McCreary will re-enter the game as Jalen Hornbeek will take a seat for Fort Worth, the firm that is. McDonald was good on the first and no good on the second. 54-53 is your score. Fort Worth with one a one-point lead and another foul called underneath. So McDonald will go back to the line. Nope, no, they're gonna call a jump ball here. Thumbs were in the air, so. McDonald and McCreary will jump for it. McCreary has the size advantage, and he'll take advantage of it. The firm come away with it. Off of the tie-up, 538. Left to go here in quarter number three. Three-pointer on the way, right corner. No good on the shot, but it was Darius Ford. He sold that one well. Kent Garrett with the late collapse, he made some contact. And Darius Ford said thank you very much. He collapsed under the weight. And Ford will head to the line. It's the firm nursing a one-point lead after jumping out to as much as a 12-point advantage earlier in the first half. Ford up and good with his first, 55-53. For the men in the blue jerseys. Second one is down as well. And Ford will have another one on the way since he was fouled from three-point land. Third shot up and good. So Darius Ford tickles the netting on all three of those free throws. 57-53. Firm up by four as back on the other end, Jonathan Milligan. Where was he in the first half? He's got the majority. Just hoops points here in half number two, 57-55, and credit Milligan for the steal there as the half-court trap forced the firm to cough it up. To Tucker, David Tucker back in the lineup here, so was Champ Grayson, he'll hold it. Now back up top of the key to McDonald. Here's Milligan, lets the contested look go. That one was from just inside the arc, and a nice save on the defensive side. It was McCreary keeping the ball inbounds. And the firm will bring it back across the timeline. Working it up is Jimmy Kelly. He'll get it off to Chasen King. King stops, pops, bounces around, and it won't go with the two-point floater. Credit Grayson with the defensive board there. McDonald. Skip pass cross-court over to David Tucker. As Just Hoops flashing their offensive prowess here. 
working to close this gap. David Cates back in the lineup. Interior pass to Milligan, right block, he'll bring it back up in the lane, turnaround, jumper falling away, and that is a nice piece of athleticism by Jonathan Milligan, the 28-year-old. Ties it up, 57-57, with 4-10 left to go in the third. Kelly drives, McDonald, oh, it looked like a clean block from here, but the, uh, the official says he got some of the rest. It was not all ball. And McDonald is asking why. And frankly, I don't blame him. Regardless, Kelly will head to the charity stripe. He'll have two coming. As substitutes checking in for just hoops. And now the officials will get together and confer. Tucker, Grayson, Milligan, McDonald, and Cates, the five on the floor for just hoops. And timeout is called. 4.08 left to go in period number three. to live action here. Kelly will shoot a pair. Up and good on the first of two. He's been a, he's been hard to handle tonight, forcing the issue offensively for the Fort Worth firm, and he's a perfect two of two that trip to the line as Kate sees an opportunity long pass to Stephen McDonald on the go route, a 94-footer there. Late collapse by the defense, the foul call. And McDonald is just in time to keep McDonald off of the scoreboard. But Stephen McDonald will go back to the line yet again. He has lived there over the course of this game. We're going to start charging him rent soon. First one rattles around and drops home. It's a one point ball game, 59-58. As Fort Worth is just not able to open up that gap as they were able to in the first half. Just hoops hanging, hanging tough. McDonald, second one won't go. Defensive board goes to the firm to McCreary. Pass to the right corner. Now top of the key to Fort. Gets the defender off his feet. Instead, he'll go left corner. Three-pointer on the way. And too strong. Rattled around and dropped out. Still 59-58 as Tucker backs four down. He'll drive into the lane now and kick it back up top of the key. McDonald controlling. Matched up against Kelly. DeMilligan had an open look for just a moment. He'll drive left instead, and it was blocked. Hand in the face. I believe that was Hornby getting in there to block that one out. Goes to Wolf Rab. Rab left elbow to the left corner now, driving is chasing King and the foul was called before that pass over to the right elbow. Believe the foul is going to go against Stephen McDonald. So it was Kelly on the drive, not chasing King, Kelly will head to the line to shoot two free throws and he'll widen the gap to two points, 60 to 58, and Kelly's got another one coming. As the battle between McDonald and Kelly is beginning to get interesting, McDonald will have to take a seat with that most recent foul, and Kelly perfect from the line again. He's four for four on his last four attempts, 61-58. Fort Worth firm. Tucker dribbles top of the key, matched up against McCreary. He'll go right elbow to Milligan. One more pass. Open look from Grayson. He passed it up for an open three by Eddie Leal. 
Haven't mentioned his name tonight. He is on the scoreboard with a wide open three, 61-61. As these two squads from Dallas-Fort Worth are doing battle here in the PBA. Handling his Hornby to wrap. Draws the double team. It was Cates there primarily. And stoppage in play. As the foul called off the ball. Leal has whistled for the off ball foul. And that'll turn it over. Or actually, it's not going to turn it over. It's uh, looks like it was an intentional foul. They are, they're going to call that one an intentional foul against Leal. So shooting is Hornbeek, and he will knock down the intentional free throw. With no one in the lane, 62-61, and Fort Worth retains possession. So Hornbeek will get it back in, and he'll get it back from Rapp. Three-pointer off of the screen, won't go. Rapp lost a shoe on the way up to the rack. He's walking around with one tire blown out. Foul was called, so Rab will slip the sneaker back on. He'll, he'll lace him up and step to the line for a pair. And at this point in the game, every free throw beginning to become crucial. In a one-point one lead, Fort Worth nursing the slight, the slightest of advantages. And it's now two as Rab knocks it down with one more on the way. And the second free throw rattles around and drops home. Rab is perfect, 64-61. Still a one possession game, just hoops. Looking to narrow that lead or tie it up here. Tucker, over to Cates. Working hard against the double team, he rises up, floats it over the outstretched arm of the defender. It won't go, offensive rebound goes to Cates. Secondary attempt by Grayson. That one's no good either, and the defensive rebound cleared away by McCreary. Here comes the firm. And timeout on the floor, 64-61 with two minutes left to go in the third period, and I've got to say it feels a lot more like the fourth period with the intensity of this game. We've still got 12 minutes of basketball left to go. Inbounds by the firm. To Rapp working at the left, the left block. He'll get around the defender and lays it in with the right hand. 66-61. Firm over just who? Former Pittsburgh player Jonathan Milligan. Handles it himself. He'll get it over to Lille. Fall away two is off the front of the iron and defensive rebound goes to Jimmy Kelly. Here come the firm once again. Rab handling. To Hornby. Three-pointer with Grayson's hand in his face. Rattles around and bounces out. 120 left to go in the quarter with a five-point advantage. Cates had to pick up his dribble. Courtesy of the dogged defense by Kelly. And a timeout is called as Just Hoops were looking at a potential 10-second violation in the backcourt. That'll stop play, 66 to 61. Firm, in firm control. Back to action here. Bodies on the floor off of the loose ball. The firm get it back to Kelly. One more pass, left block. Count the bucket, 61-61, open three on the other end for David Tucker. And it's no good. Firm with it again with a seven-point lead. Hornby to Kelly. They'll swing it over into the left corner. It's McCreary. Falls away, knocks it down. It's elementary at this point for McCreary. That's what he does best. 70-61 with 35. Left to go here in the third. Open look from three for Cates. And the power forward for Just Hoops. Knocks the bottom out of it. 70-61. Let's see how long Fort Worth wants to hold the ball here with 20 seconds left to go until the end of the third. One to one on one here. Kelly against Lil, and he will get it over to Wolf Rab. Rab against Cates here. And Rab looking for a man to the left corner. He threw it all the way to the wall and out of bounds. 
Chase Kelly appears to be a little injured here. That is not good news for Fort Worth. Kelly is on the ground holding that right wrist. That is not a pretty sight for the Fort Worth firm as play continues regardless. Six ticks left in the third. And the ball goes to Milligan. Last shot of the quarter on the way. Missed everything. And that is how the third comes to an end. Fort Worth has opened up a nine-point advantage over Just Hoops. Although we've still got, well, they're going to put two-tenths of a second back on the clock. As you, as you see, uh, you see Jimmy Kelly getting up and trying to shake off the pain in that right wrist. Will he be, will he be available in the, in the fourth? Time will tell. As the foul was called on the deep attempt, so Milligan will head to the line. And with two tenths of a second left on the clock, Fort Worth giving up unnecessary points here. Milligan knocks down the first free throw. Second one on the way. That one's good as well, and he'll have a third one coming in only a moment. McDonald will check out for just a second. Grayson back in. Third free, uh, third free throw, rather, from Milligan. Bends the knees, fires, and knocks it down. And Fort Worth has the last bit shot no good. Tour be lit, first of all, to even be on tour, you got to be... You gotta be one of the one of the super duper flies. People in Atlanta, they love Slutty Vegan, but like outside of Atlanta, it's crazy. The adrenaline rush that you get from it is just is amazing. We do celebrity events, casting calls, video shoots. When they say it's fresh and ready to go, like it's fresh and ready to go. We do it all ourselves. No machines, no nothing. We literally just got flat tops, grills, and fryers. Being on the road and being on tour specifically, it's like it's like you're a celebrity. Been to Boston. Tampa, Alabama a few times, North Carolina. The fact that we are able to travel together is like a whole different relationship. I like to call us like we're like Fast and Furious, right? Like it's, you know, we're on the road. We're not in expensive cars or muscle cars, but we're in a big giant yellow truck. If somebody's got it and they're special and you see it and you want to work somewhere where you can just be yourself, this is the place. We make good tip money. You get to meet all types of people and it's fun. Fourth period underway here from Dallas, Texas, as the Fort Worth Firm hoping to nurse a three-point lead for the next 10 minutes, and this will certainly help. Jalen Hornbeek with a strip. He'll take it all the way down and flip it home with the right hand. 72-67 as the lead is now five. Jonathan Milligan will bring it across the timeline for just hoops. Kicks it over to Eddie Leal, and Leal banked it off the backboard, off the side of the backboard at that. Back down the floor comes Fort Worth. Put two more on the board, 74-67, as Just Hoops will call a quick timeout to try to cauterize the wound. David Case will get it off of the inbounds pass for Just Hoops, and he will have to get more involved here in the second half if Just Hoops wants to pull away. The Milligan will kick it back out to Tucker. To Leal. Nice pass by Leal. He'll drop it right into the bread box for David Tucker. Tucker will curl. Flip it over to Milligan. No good on the first look, and Milligan will follow his shot. Goes up and sticks it back on the second chance. 74 69. Firm still in control of their own destiny here, as it'll be Jeremy Matthews handling. Open three. Short off the iron. and it was knocked out of bounds, last touched by a firm player. Pushing the tempo is just hoops. That one will get out of bounds as well, and it was Cates who last got fingers on it. So 8.44 and counting. As we'll see how conservative Fort Worth the firm rather want to be here as again both of these teams from the Dallas Fort Worth area the firm in their second season in the PBA joining last year and an inside look turns into two points high percentage for the firm 76 69 Stephen McDonald for just hoops top of the key thought about passing to the right elbow instead he'll take it himself Had the one-on-one -on -one matchup he was looking for and missed the lay-in quick pass all the way back down now and it's lost 
Too hot to handle there as Milligan will pick it up. Over to Cates. Three-pointer from the right corner won't go. And the foul is called underneath the basket. It would have been a defensive rebound had the foul not been called. So the offensive rebound went to Jonathan Milligan, who has been all over the hardwood here in the second half, but he'll, he will miss the first of two free throws. That would have made it a six-point game had it gone in. Subs checking in. You see Cedric Harris making his way back out onto the floor for DFW Just Hoops in their first game of this 2022 regular season. Milligan with the second stroke. It's up and down. 76 to 70 and a foul coming here immediately off of the inbounds pass. It'll be credited to Kent Garrett. As Garrett will pick up the personal. He will remain in the game and 757 left to go in this ball game. Chasen King. Brings it across the timeline, working man to man against Cedric Harris. Horn beak, top of the key. Nice look inside. It was Dwayne Soders in the right block. Received the pass and quickly laid it in off the glass. 78-70. Firm pulling away. Stephen McDonald would like to do something about that for just two. Kicks it over to Milligan. Milligan skip pass all the way across the court to Kent Garrett missing the three-pointer and pulling down the defensive board out of the firm. Here they come. Three-pointer from Hornbeek and he is true. Wide open on the three-point attempt and it's an 11-point ball game. Quickly on the other end, pushing the tempo is just hoops. It was Cates receiving the pass from the right block and the two-handed lay-in will get the lead back to single digits for the firm. Handling his horn beak, bodies on the floor, no foul called. Underneath the bucket, wraparound lay-in attempt. Won't go the first time, won't go the second time either by Soders. Defensive rebound, here they come, off and running. Are just two, one pass, two pass, three passes, and the look inside from Cates to Milligan turns into Pader, 81-74 as Just Hoops reeling in the Fort Worth firm. Six and a half left to go. It's Keen knocked off of his step. Foul is called as King was able to avoid the travel. Even if he had walked, it would have been credited to the contact anyway. So King heads to the line for a pair. It's 81-74 as King knocks down the first of two free throws. Second one, up and in as Jimmy Kelly will rejoin the lineup for the third, looking for that offensive spark to put just hoops away. McDonald drives, drew the double team and threw it away. It's stolen by King. He'll get it up court to Kelly, wide open, no one in front of him, and he'll lay it in easily with the left hand, 85-74. Just ahead of six minutes left to go in the ballgame. And the stoppage in play as King will be whistled for the foul. Attempted the half-court trap right across the timeline against Stephen McDougall, or excuse me, Stephen McDougall. But King draws the foul instead. Milligan against Kelly. He'll kick it over to Garrett and a wide and a three-pointer will fall. Anything but a wide open three-pointer. There was certainly a hand in the face. But Ken Garrett with the composure to knock it down. 85-77, you see, we are approaching the midway point of the fourth period. 540 left to go in this ball game, in regulation anyway. Difference is eight. It's the firm working with it here. Got to be Wolf Rath left of the lane and stoppage in play. As the foul is called, it will go against Stephen uh, McDonald, I do believe. And an intentional foul once again. So McDonald is whistled for that. And Hornbeek will shoot the intentional free throw. Knocks it down much like he did his first time around. 86-77, and Fort Worth will retain possession. So King gets it into Kelly, and he'll get it right back. King over to Hornbeek. To Rath. Hornbeek 
Circles around, dribbles, drives, splits the lane, won't go on the first attempt. The second chance won't go by Wolf Rapp. And an offensive foul is called off of the ball. As the officials will get together for a quick chat, but certainly the offensive foul was called. Changing the play at the last moment. Changing the call, rather. Some confusion on the hardwood with 4.47 left to go in the ballgame. And yes, they will say that Fort Worth is keeping the basketball. They changed the offensive foul call after one official had already sent play back down the other way. So the inbounds play to Hornby. King. Jason King in the left corner. Chalk it for three, 89-77. And that is feeling like a dagger. As Just Hoops will throw it away, the wild pass by Champ Grayson. A hook shot type of pass, threw it over his head and all the way to the back wall. 12 point advantage for the firm. And some time has been put back on the clock. We're back over five minutes here, 5.08 and ticking. Left in the ball game, Kelly. Working against Milligan. Kicks it into the left corner. Still a simple man-to-man -man defensive look here. Nothing fancy by Just Hoops. Hornby. Ball away jumper. It should be good for two. 91-77 is your score. And off of the steal, Fort Worth will, will hold on to the basketball once again. Keen gets it from Rapp. See how much urgency Fort Worth wants to play with here. More urgency by Just Hoops that time to strip it away. It was Cedric Harris coming up with the steal. He'll draw the double team, kick it over to an open Jonathan Milligan who gets behind the D and drops it home. Still a 12 point disadvantage for Just Hoops as lockdown defense applied by McDonald. Somehow it's Rab coming away with the ball. Charges down the lane and with the right hand, he will chip it in. 93-79 with just over four minutes left in the game and the stoppage in play as McDonald was driving, foul was coming. So the foul will go against the Fort Worth firm. McDonald will get it in from Milligan, and the waters will part as McDonald drove the lane with a head of steam, split the gap, and dropped it home. 93-81, your score. Four minutes on the game clock. Driving, flipping it over the right hand. Ooh, as we've got some pushing and shoving here. As I do not have number one on my roster for Fort Worth. But drove the lane hard. He got tied up with McDonald, and the two had to be separated after the play. Fireworks appear to have subsided. And number one will shoot a pair. It's the lead again is double digits, 93 to 81 for Fort Worth. And with under four minutes left to play, these two free throws would likely be the final nails in the coffin. Low block, David Tucker right, lined up directly across from David, or excuse me, it's, uh, it's Cedric Harris lined up right across from David Cates. David Tucker stands left of the shoot. Second free throw will not go, so 94 to 81. And Cates with the defensive board. To Tucker, picked up by Kelly, crosses over. To Cates, just to the right of the low block. Gates brings it back out up top. Guarded closely, face to face, man up defense. Driving inside is McDonald, he'll lean in, and it's a long two point shot. He was leaning toward the rim, falling toward the bucket, and he's able to convert the basket. 94 83. Just who still has life here, although that's going to make it awfully tough. Wow. Hornbeak, I believe that was Jalon Hornbeak 
with the contested three, and he nailed it. 97-83, foul is called on the way in. Dribble and drive by Milligan. They will say the foul was on the floor before he started the motion. As King comes back into the game for Fort Worth. And with 315 left to play, just who's working with the ball here. Deep three on the way. That one missed everything. And the defensive rebound goes to King. Fort Worth content to run some clock here. Dribbling it out is Wolf Rapp, who had a, an incredible third period. He's been relatively quiet over the remainder of this game, but the third period by Wolf Rapp was certainly his breakout performance, and there's the icing on the cake for Darius Ford. Right of the elbow, knocked it down for three, and Fort Worth gets it right back off of the kick ball. Another three-pointer from the left corner, rattles around and fall and won't go, but the offensive board will go to Jimmy Kelly, and Kelly threw it away. Taken away by Just Hoops. Here comes Cates crashing hard down the lane, and he'll lay it in with two hands. It's 100 to 85 as timeout on the floor. Well, it looked like uh, King was uh, whistling for a timeout, or he was, he was uh, signaling for a timeout. Whether the officials will grant it, it appears that they will not. As Hornbeak will head back to the line alone once again. It must be another intentional foul situation here as Hornbeak knocks it down as he has two times prior in this game. So three intentional fouls go against Just Hoops and it's 101-85. Fort Worth holding on to the basketball, the firm that is. Kelly working hard against Milligan. And the 28-year-old forces the turnover. As Kelly lost it out of bounds. Can Just Hoops make something happen? Down by 16 points. 101-85. With 2.24 left to go in the ballgame. Cates will get it into McDonald. Right back to Cates. Had an open look for just a moment, but the defense slides over late. It was Kelly collapsing from out of nowhere. Kelly will draw the foul, and Cates will head to the line for two, although for a moment it looked like he would have an easy jam. Cates with a flick of the wrist makes it 101-86 with another one on the way. You've got to think full court pressure will almost certainly be applied here by Just Hoops should Cates make this next shot. It's up, and he missed it. Off the left side of the iron, and the defensive rebound pulled down by Rapp. He'll kick it ahead to Kelly. One more pass all the way to the left uh, to the left side of the block, and that's an easy look for two. High percentage bucket by the Fort Worth, for, Fort Worth Firm. 103-86 with 125 ticks left in the game. McDonald running point. He'll jack up a deep three. Hit the, hit the floor, but there was no contact there. The official will not call the foul, and that turns into an easy transition bucket going back down the other way. Jimmy Kelly ran the length of the floor and dropped it home. Almost stole it again on the uh, initial inbounds pass. Was out of position, though, and that's what leads to an easy three-pointer by Stephen McDonald in the right corner, 105-89. High tempo here as Fort Worth quickly pushing the ball. Rap. Tied up by Tucker on the way to the rack. And they'll say that was a clean strip. Rab touched it last. So nicely done by David Tucker to force the turnover. Just Hoop still has some work to do. 105-89 as we approach the 92nd mark. McDonald working hard. He'll keep it himself. Isolation play. Three-pointer on the way. It was close, but it won't go. Off the back of the iron. Offensive rebound to Cates. And he wanted the foul. And he's out of commission here. Foul was not called. Ball is pushed back up across the timeline. And we'll get a stoppage in play. As both Cates and McDonald are giving the men in stripes the business today. 
as Fort Worth, the firm, look to improve to 2-0 in 2022. Just over a minute left to play, and they will likely do just that as it's Hornby driving the lane. Had the ball knocked out of bounds, it'll bounce off the padding. And the inbounds play over the top. Defended well, and it's off the front of the ref, Mulligan. Rebound to a bucket back on the other side. Three-pointer is knocked down. It's 105-92 as Jonathan Milligan did not play very much in the first half. Entered the game late in the second, immediately made an impact with a beautiful inbounds pass that led to a, a nice three by Stephen McDonald. He's been a force to be reckoned with here in the second, although Fort Worth has stretched the lead out. It was a tie ball game. Headed out of the halftime locker room as we've got a foul call here. That'll stop the clock at 101. And it looks like it will be Fort Worth basketball. Again, the lone win of the season thus far for the Fort Worth firm. They're 1-0. Here in 2022, they got a win over the BLTN Ballers, 99 to 92, that final score, back on May 22nd. It'll be Hornbeak at the line to shoot the bonus free throws. First of two up and good. 106 to 92, the score. As some friendly conversation beginning to break out as this one is all but over. Hornbeak with a second free throw, too strong off the back of the iron, and the offensive rebound cleared away by Wolf Rapp. That will just about do it as it's chasing King, working against David Cates, as Cates hasn't quite given up the goats yet. King dribbles, drives with the Euro step. He will get around the defender and lay it in. There's a little razzmatazz to end the game. 108 to 92, three-pointer on the way on the other end by David Cates. No good, offensive rebound goes to Milligan. He'll put up a three to make it 108 to 95. As Milligan remains on fire from beyond the arc. Timeout called as Rab was trapped in the backcourt with 35 seconds left to go in the game. So out of the timeout, one final play is drawn up in front of the Fort Worth firm bench. And Rab will inbound. Dribbling it out is King. And he'll pull it back out to the logo. 22 seconds in ticking. And King is fouled. On the way around just to stop play, Cedric Harris will stop the clock at 18. And Fort Worth in the bonus. So Chase and King will head to the line to take his shots. Bends the knees, flicks the wrist, and King knocks it home. 109 to 95, as this one is all but elementary. Make it 110 on the scoreboard for the firm. That's what a high-tempo offense will do for you as Stephen McDonald. Holding for what is likely the final possession here for just Hoops. He'll dump it off to Milligan, lets the three-pointer go. No good, but the follow-up by Cedric Harris will go. 110 to 97 is the inbounds attempt with three, two, one. McDonald with the steal. He'll put up the late three-pointer, and that is going to do it. Late on the shot attempt, it wouldn't fall anyway, and that's your final score, the Battle of Fort Worth goes the way of the firm. As the men in blue improve to 2-0 on the season, Just Hoots will come back looking for their first win in their next timeout. They will drop to 0-1. This has been the PBA on Triangle Media, presented by 1891 Sports. I'm Kayla P. So long for now.